Hi, and welcome to the Swan Effect Mums Coffee and Chat Podcast. This is Lynn. This week, we are talking to Tessa, aka the Sleepy Mammy. Hi, Tessa, you okay? Hi, Lynn. How are you? Well, it's not really coffee, is it? It's no. Wine. It's Friday night. Go on, show everyone on the video. Ding, 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 ding. We're having a wine. <laughs> Tessa's having one small bottle. I've just took out a big bottle. I'm already on my second lap. Mm-hmm. We've had a, had a bit of a chat already. Anyway, right. Well, I- Ooh. I'm out of practice, so by the end of this, we could be. I'm gonna be. Slurring. We could be talking about anything. Which is why I do coffees. It's better. At least I'm a bit more like wired. I'm gonna just fall asleep by the end of this. Not because you're boring. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> most of the podcasts will just. Most of the most of the podcasts will just be us going. Yes, yeah, slurring and just like one eye closed, flying. <laughs> right, so to this week's episode, we're going to be talking about newborn sleep advice. So I'm going to start with the first question, which I ask yes. everybody. Where do you live and who do you live with? I live in a little village in County Limerick in Ireland, which is south of Ireland, if anyone's not from Ireland. Um, and I live in a house with my husband and my three kids and my dog. And I have a five-year-old, who's Lily May, a two-year-old, Kaya, and Harry, who is just after turning 12 months. Your hands full. And you're with them most of the time. Your partner works away, doesn't he? Your husband works away. So he works the way. He's up the country during the week. So he's gone at like five o'clock on a Friday morning. He's not home till usually five or six o'clock Friday, Friday evening. Or he's gone Monday morning, sorry. Monday, yeah. And um, he's not home till you know late on a Friday evening usually so I'm kind of single mum yeah, during the are. week although I although I do have help with my my mother my dad my mother my father helped me out because we just formed a pod with them straight away yeah after lockdown because you're not um, bad are you <laughs> no well lockdown one we had a premie baby so we had no choice yeah for childcare and things like that we just yeah. kept it going like that because it's just them. My sister lives in Australia. There's no one else calling into their house and there's no one else calling into our house. So without them, I would have been absolutely lost. And I just must say, I've been doing it for a long time now. He's been doing it since Kaya. When Kaya was three weeks old, he left again to work away. And I must say that was harder at the time because going from one to two was a massive shock to the system. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, I must say that it's been easier this time. Um, I'm I'm kind of used to it now. It's kind of part of it. It's still crap though. Do you know what I mean? It's still crap. And single parents like heroes, unbelievable. Oh, I don't know how they do it. I really don't know how they do it. No, I don't. And they don't have enough support at all. No. At all. Especially in what we've been through in the last year. Can you imagine being a single parent? No. No, I've, I've seen posts online of of you know a woman for example who got covid and also had a two-year-old mm-hmm. but she couldn't get anyone to find to mind the two-year-old you know what i mean so like oh god i can just imagine i can just imagine do you know what that i was thinking you know if i was single i'd go to bed a lot earlier mm. you know i think sometimes when you're in a, you know you've, you've got a husband i mean i'm, I'm not married but with bill and partner mm-hmm. when i'm really tired when it's been really hard you know especially in the first few months I would be like, they're in bed. I, I just want to go to bed and just try and get some sleep. But then you think, I haven't seen him all day. And, you know, he wants to speak to me because he's been in work all day. And I just think, oh, if I, and then and I remember a friend of mine um, brought up um, her third child on her own um, out of choice in the end. And mm-hmm. she just said, I just go to bed when they go to bed. I, I just know, I know it's not learned long term. I just, I need sleep. And that yeah. was the thing for her. So I thought, yeah, that's the thing. But yeah, like I said, I've just, thrown Ronnie to fill now and so I'm doing a podcast <laughs> you deal with that yeah like you I do most... that on a Friday don't you One, two, oh I tell you I can feel a TikTok coming I'm going to make a TikTok video about it because okay. it's just yeah, like the minute it. he comes in boom I have checked out mama's off duty like Tessa actually um messaged me before a picture of her saying I'm having a cheeky nap <laughs> he's home I'm going to have a cheeky nap before our podcast <laughs> It was the most beautiful, amazing sleep. And all I was woken up with, and I was drooling. That's how, do you know, when you've had a good sleep, now you're drooling. Will you help me with bedtime? I was like, are you, are you taking the mic? <laughs> do it every night by myself. <laughs> can you not do it tonight? Yeah. So I can have a shower. So I yeah. look halfway presentable to talk to my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I 
handle it. They can't handle it. They can't yeah, handle multitask at all. You know what? I, I swear to God, I say this all the time. We say that about men, don't we? Oh, they wouldn't be able to do what, what we do. But you know, they never get the opportunity to, do they? You know, like oh. if, the, if the roles were reversed and I said to Phil, look, it's, you'll have the better package if you take a year off work than I would. Then do you want to look after the babies? He would yeah. be like, yeah, definitely. I know he would. Yeah. I'm not saying they've got the opportunity. Him. Yeah. Yeah. And he'd like, like me, you'd have to just deal with it, like find his own way, wing it, you know, make his mistakes, learn from his mistakes. You know, I think that's the thing is that we, I find myself like just then I went, do you want, do you want another bottle making before I start? You know, I'm like, why? You know, he can do that, but I just yeah. instantly get in there before. I know and I suppose it. we we both had a similar start off to motherhood in that we were both really sick yeah um we both had sepsis after yeah. sections and Ollie was had trial by fire really because we were in Australia <clears throat> my family was here at home mm. my sister was getting married I was in hospital he had no experience with babies and um had to wing it himself for the eight days that I was basically hooked up to an IV you know and um did a fantastic job so props to him for that because he just I was never worried about her no because I knew he was handling it you know what I mean yeah um and that took so much stress off me because you know yourself we were so sick but that's probably mm. another whole podcast we could talk about yeah no do you know what? I think probably will so I forget that you had sepsis as well and mm. then, yeah when Phil had two weeks off and I came home after a week um and I wasn't right and everyone said you weren't right Lynn and mm. I was still really poorly and he was worried about going back to work but then he he had to go back to work he wouldn't have got paid yeah. otherwise and he said he just kept worrying all day texting me all day you okay and I'm like yeah I'm fine because I just wasn't showing signs of um wanting to pick her up all the time and things because I just sit there in a daze because I just was really exactly poorly. the same awful. You know, I was actually I was actually googling mental health facilities at one point because I thought it was all in my brain yeah yeah and it was day 10 then I, I rang my doctor and I was like something's not right you mm-hmm. know and I kept missing my temperatures and things like that and like Jesus I could go on and on about it but yeah I, I definitely was the same I was googling mental health facilities mm-hmm. where I could actually bring my baby with me because I thought it was all some massive postnatal depression that yeah, it was just I thought it was like a trauma thing. turns out I was septic <clears throat> yeah you had a very traumatic birth I didn't yeah. have a traumatic birth it was afterwards yeah um that it got traumatic so you know my that's God, another podcast you know we'll do that that's because another, I've never we will. Been, I yeah, didn't know I had I'd, sepsis until I got pregnant with Ronnie and then I did an after birth thoughts service because I had such um like I, I think I had a bit of PTSD or something that came mm. back and they read my notes back to me from beyond birth because I couldn't remember anything and they said yeah and I said well why was I in hospital for a week she was out of special care in three days I was really poorly she said because you had sepsis but they didn't tell me at the time and I said to Phil did they mm. tell you I had sepsis and he went no they just said you had a virus yeah they did the I same didn't time. even know I had sepsis and so imagine that I knew. knew and we were just like everyone was like why is Lynn being weird like and I just couldn't I felt numb all the time like I couldn't move it was weird very strange feeling we will do that. We'll do another. We'll definitely, definitely that. yeah. Because that would definitely help people to listen to things like that. Because oh, I tell yeah. you, I, oh. I worst experience of my life. Ever. I thought I was yeah, going to die. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's move on. That's another Let's podcast. <laughs> so tell us about the Sleepy Mammy Instagram account. So basically, I don't even know. I say this all the time. Um, there are certain people that I have become very friendly with on Instagram, and Tessa is one of those. But very recently what November time maybe I don't even know um when it October was. I start I started my account in October and I don't think I met you until a couple of weeks later so that yeah. would probably be November yeah November. and I don't even remember where I came across you I think I slipped into your dms I say it all the time oh, yes. yeah, I, like, I like what I saw Tessa <laughs> yeah I like I, I try to remember where I found you where I found Sonia and things like that and I can't remember can't, my, sometimes my... it's just people do follow Fridays and or they'll go oh and they'll just tag you in stories which is lovely and then people will yeah. add you and then maybe I'll see something and I'll go oh yeah you know maybe you do a question which you do a lot of on your Instagram so <clears throat> why did you start that account in October I suppose, look, 
I had done the course while I was pregnant with Harry. I had always been very interested in baby sleep from when I found out um, that sleep consultants existed. I didn't know anything about sleep consultants when I had Lily Mae. I thought that I was just a failure as a mother mm -hmm. and I couldn't get a handle on her sleep. And the thing is that Lily Mae slept through the night from eight weeks on. So she was really good up until eight months for sleeping at night, but sleeping during the day, nightmare. She was never off me. And I just felt like I had absolutely no time to myself. My sense yeah. of self went out the window. So she hit the eight months sleep regression and that's when nighttime started being affected. So I reached out to one of my friends who told me about um, uh, some help with sleep and things like that. And I got help with her and we got her on the right track and then I just fell in love with it. Any one of my friends will tell you, anyone that knows me a long time will tell you that I love to sleep. It is my favorite pastime. So when you have babies, unfortunately, you can't do what you want when you want no, anymore. Goes, yeah. Yeah. So I, I suppose I, I did the course and I was really, I really didn't feel like I had the confidence to go on the gram, as we'll call it. Um, the thought of looking at myself, the thought of actually talking into a phone. Hi guys, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah. But I just was sitting at home one night and a lot of my friends had said to me, just do it, just mm -hmm. do it. Get onto Instagram and just do it. And I remember my very first story was like in the dark, no one could see me, you know, because I was just so conscious mm -hmm. and I was like, I am just an I'm a sleep consultant, you know, I'm a of tree. <laughs> and um, slowly but surely, like I have grown so much in the last six months because of both, like I suppose as a business and personally, because I suppose Instagram has almost replaced social my social life because there's no social life here in Ireland well there will be hopefully back in a few months but um it's a great escape and you know I didn't know when I was going starting it really I said what am I what have I got to lose I said to myself I'm going to go for it I'm going to try and help some people and things like that and six months on the messages I get every week telling me how much I've helped people yeah have made me really want to keep going with it because oh, yeah. my confidence when I started it was like my boots you know I had had a traumatic time with Harry he was born prematurely it was in the middle of a pandemic you know Her Ollie was working away from home it was just everything was just climbing climbing on top of me and I felt like I needed something for myself and I said right I'm starting this Instagram page even though I would have been helping people prior to that it was nothing like it is now it was just low-key and I wasn't selling myself for you know doing anything like that so and it's Isn't nice it, I've, to be I've messaged you have been I was just always for I've messaged you and said you know you need a website test you need because I've got a business head on and I'm like you know you need to do this you need to do that you need to set up a website yeah. don't go Wix go web, web, web WordPress do this do that sell packages don't sell yourself short don't answer all these questions you know people are going to ask you advice um and you're giving free advice which is great but you're giving your, and then you're sharing it with everyone. So everyone's getting that free advice, you know, sell, mm. you know, you've done that course, you've done all the hard work, you're an expert in it. So you don't sell yourself short. And you were like, oh yeah, even then you were like, oh yeah, yeah. but now. I, know, but I just felt so guilty, but now I'm definitely stronger. Mm. Like I will get messages. And if I can answer it in one message, I will do it. Mm. But what I found for a while, and it took me a while to balance it. And I think it's a constant battle is to get the balance between giving time to that and giving time to your family because yeah. I would be playing with the kids and a message would come through with someone asking me a question. Mm -hmm. And instead of watching and playing and being with my kids, I was concentrating on this person's yeah. message. And a lot of the time I was getting messages and people can be quite rude, actually. Now it's in the minority, but people can be quite rude and they can just say, tell me this or what's this? And then you, and I learned that pretty quickly. I was sending them back reams and reams of messages and this, and I wouldn't even get a thank you no exactly and I'm not doing this for thanks but I think a lot of people didn't understand that this is actually an income for me especially yes. now because I'm not nursing and it's not as if like I'm sitting here waiting to answer everybody else's problems out of the goodness of my heart I have to be a mother in it you know I have to be me too now that might sound incredibly selfish but I mean it was very similar to myself that 
you know, I, I started this before the pandemic, but it was very, very minute. And then it's escalated because I needed, I needed an escape. I couldn't get out of the house. I need to be outside of the house and I couldn't. And I was feeling very claustrophobic. It was a very tough year. And I, I keep saying all the time, this has saved me, not the podcast, but the whole Swan Effect thing has helped yeah. a lot. Instagram has been fab. Um, what started with a support group um, has escalated and I'm now part of three support groups of lovely women um, do the podcast, nice. I do blogs, I've done guest blogs, try and get people some confidence in writing to start their own blogs, getting people to have a voice to talk about, you know, their experiences to help others. And it's just been really good. Um, I don't sell myself or anything because I'm not an expert. That's what I mean. I haven't trained in anything. Um one day I might, I might do it. I think I'll probably concentrate when I go back to work and being a full-time working mum and that'll be where I'll start niching down. Um, yeah. At the minute, I'm not, so I, I can't give advice, but I will do once I go back. But I think for me, Instagram is very much a, an instant thing, Insta. But people, if the more you give, the more people will take, which is fine. And when you're starting, I think that's lovely. But like you said, and they're not saying please or thank yous. I was kind of doing the same, trying to put so much into it that now what I do is do it in the evenings. So I'll do my podcast in the evenings or I'll do it during the week when Fionn's in the childminders and someone can look after Ronnie for an hour. And I don't ever want yeah. it to bite into my family time now. Yeah, I did find that it was biting into my family time there and it's taken me quite a few months to get the balance of that. But I feel like I have it now. Now I'm sure it'll tip over the edge again, but you just get so excited and you get so oh, into you it. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> I suppose you know you you do have to take a step back every now and again and go right I need to get off the gram yeah you know um I need to get out of the emails and like it's not too bad the emails are not too bad for me because it generally is customers and clients and things like that and that's fine um and I'll do my best if I see someone is in really dire straits and my heart goes right out to them and I feel like I can help them I will help them um or if it's a, just a quick question and I can answer with one message, yeah, that's done. I will do that. No yeah. problem. Like, you know, and people have come to me saying I need an hour and I'm like, maybe you only need a 20 minute session, you know, like, yeah, I don't, I'm not here to just take money, but at the same time, I'm not doing it for the crack, you know, because it <laughs> is a lot, yeah. it's a lot of work. I like know. it's a lot, a lot of work. Like, yeah, you know yourself, you know, and I don't even type up blogs or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? So, Someone said I don't know how you do it. And I said, I don't know myself, really. I touch type a lot and I can type very quickly. Um, <laughs> if I'm writing something that's in my head anyway, it doesn't take me very long. Um, podcasts, I enjoy it. I edit it in the evenings. This is like an hour. Like I find this is like socializing, chatting to people. It's lovely. Yeah. What we'll do is now we'll concentrate now on the question. So if you're listening now and you're interested in or having help in newborn sleep or you're pregnant and you're worried about it, I'm just going to ask um, Tessa some questions. So yes. everyone knows that the more you sleep, the better it is for your overall health. But why is it so important mm -hmm. for adults and children to get enough sleep? What happens if you don't get enough sleep? Well, I suppose, you know, it's really a balancing act because, you know, a lot of parents would be very stressed out by that statement, I suppose, early on because they'll feel baby's not sleeping mm -hmm. enough and it's going to affect their development. Um, but studies studies do show that more sleep more quality sleep is better for their development for their both cognitive and physical development for their milestones and things like that for us it's just good to function it's good for our health it's good for everybody's health both young and old um mental people always say to me sleep health. it off if you're not feeling very well go to bed and sleep it off yeah well you need sleep yeah like it's a biological need and you know does it mend it, you know when you're sleeping is it because you're so relaxed your body doesn't have to concentrate on things like move your arms open your eyes you know it can just concentrate on one area that's, that's it, not it, very it, well or something yeah it just like it just kind of concentrates i suppose your body just relaxes and it's just all about rejuvenating and replacing mm. and um you know, I suppose I can't even think of the word now that I'm trying to think of, but replenishing, yeah. you know, and that's what it's all about um, mm. for us as adults and the same for kids, but they they actually um, form memories and, and do a lot of cognitive development while they're asleep as well. All right. Okay. Yeah. So as a pediatric sleep consultant, what is the most asked question you receive from parents and what's the advice you give? You have told me this already, but if you let everybody know. 
It's just about newborn sleep, really. Um, and I get asked about newborn sleep all the time and why baby won't sleep for longer than 30 minutes and why they won't go into a routine and things like that. They're not capable of it. They're just not capable of it. Why, why, and, they, why is it newborn then? Because I find, I mean, I get that, but I think for me, all throughout pregnancy, you, you start not sleeping from six months on because you're uncomfortable and things like that. Mm-hmm. And I, and the doctor said to me, it's your body's way of getting you prepared for not sleeping in the fourth trimester, basically. You, I suppose, yeah. 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 Um, you get used to not sleeping and you just you kind of plod on with it. Um, mm-hmm. So it's not such a shock when the baby comes. And I thought that's a good way of looking at it. And then mm. I think, I don't know, like for me personally, I just knew I wasn't going to sleep. And I knew that it would be every three hours or so feed, you know, you'd be up for an hour with them and then they'd fall asleep again for another two to three hours. I just knew that that was the pattern, but I suppose it's not the pattern for everybody, is it? No, because I tell you, even though you go to these antenatal classes and they tell you they'll need feeding three every three hours, you don't realise on any level, for me, how tough that can be. Um, If you're up, Feeding every three hours, it means that you're getting maybe between getting a bottle ready, feeding it, burping, um, changing nappy, changing nappies, sterilizing mm. everything like that you're getting maybe an hour and a half. Yeah, hour and forty five minutes. I used to time. Yeah, yeah, and I that's that's one sleep cycle for us, you know, <laughs> and that's constantly broken yeah. sleep. You know what I mean? And you need one chunk of long sleep really to get any mm. decent kind of replenishment out of it for the most part it's short term and you can deal with it but I really wish that someone had prepared me a little bit better for it because it hit me like a ton of bricks it hit me like a ton of bricks yeah it hit me like a ton of bricks I had no idea whether I was just I really thought it was just crap I just thought it was a shitty mother that couldn't handle being a mother but it was because I suppose even five years ago like Lily May is only five you wouldn't have heard a lot of people going, this shit is hard. You know, this is really that. hard. Yeah. But I, I, I was in Australia though. So I don't know really. And I think over the last, since I've had Kaya, like she's two and a half now, things have really changed. Conversations have completely changed. We're, we're talking about birth trauma, things like this, you know, and the Me Too movement and things like that. Even though that probably doesn't have a lot to do with what we're talking about, I suppose women feel more comfortable about talking about things like that and they're not afraid to hide it so I was just ashamed that I was failing really Mm. and um yeah I just wish that someone had said to me you are going to be tired you are going to be more tired than you have ever been in your life see that's all anyone kept telling me and I was like I know like yeah well you were prepared then but nobody ever nobody ever told me that oh well yeah nobody ever told me that well I was one of my first out of my friend group to have a baby as well like so I was oh yeah <laughs> do you know how it's well so. I'm an old mum like I'm such an old mum all my fr- school friends have got teenagers all 20 year olds actually so yeah I yeah. kind of have seen them and you know, they just constantly and I used to think oh that looks hard <laughs> I don't know how they can cope with that you're so, you're like I'm off to the pub <laughs> yeah so the advice you'd give for them obviously you're not going to I don't want you to tell me what you tell people because obviously that's you know your services but you would just say just be aware that sleep just deprivation be aware that is you will real. be tired sleep yeah. deprivation is real and they you will have babies that will sleep absolutely perfectly from day one you will have babies that seem to sleep perfectly and then it all goes up in the air and then you'll have babies that never want to feel you never it never seems like they want to sleep and it's all normal do you know what and i'm going to one piece of advice for anyone that's listening because my best well one of my best friends um kelly <laughs> she, she's listening <laughs> Um, I went round to hers when Ronnie was eight weeks old, I think. And to be honest, started sleeping through the night at eight weeks. Yes. And I just said, oh, I forgot how bad this is. You know, I forgot how tired I am. I don't know. I've got a toddler now. And she said, no, I never had that. My teeth was sleeping through the night by the time they were five, six weeks. Please don't ever say that to a woman who has just told you that they have got sleep deprivation. No. I've never wanted to poke my fingers in my best friend's <laughs> eyes ever in my whole life. Hey. For God's sake, Kelly. <laughs> I'm like, look, they're 16 and 13 now. I'm so happy that you've got through it, but I am going through this right now. Give me some sympathy. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. Even yeah. though, like, 
Lily May started sleeping through the night from eight weeks. And I remember my brother-in-law gave her a bottle and she slept from 10 until four, which was the longest stretch yeah. she ever did. And I was like, you're coming over every night giving her yeah. a bottle. We are recreating the exact same thing every day. But she was just, nat- she just naturally fell into that. And it wasn't anything I was doing. Um, now that all darn- turned upside down when she turned eight once. But still, I was still sleep deprived and I was also deprived of my sense of self because during the day she would not sleep anywhere but on me. And I found myself getting just absolutely smothered by it. Yeah, um, I couldn't go to the toilet by myself. Mm. You know, I, you know, it was just, it was a lot. Even though she was sleeping through the night, which was great, she still wasn't having a perfect sleep journey. And as I've said, that all turned upside down when she turned eight months and then the nighttime sleep started being affected. So, um, yeah, I would never say, well, all my babies were sleeping through the night by eight weeks. Yes, they were, but it doesn't mean we didn't hit bumps in the road. No, that's you know it. I mean, know, Ronnie they're not robots. And we were like, yes, we've got it. <laughs> and then, because I said, she needs to go to bed. Like we're, we've got her in the living room. She needs bedtime at eight o'clock. You know, mm. no matter what happens, if she gets up and cries, we'll stay in the bedroom to deal with it. We're not bringing her back. Yes, in yeah. That's kind of my rule and it works. Um, yes. Literally three weeks ago, she started waking up for a feed in the middle of the night. Oh, I can't tell you. I feel more tired now than I did in the very <laughs> beginning because, like I said, I never slept from six months onwards. So I was just like, yeah, fine, whatever, bottle, feed the baby, fine. I mean, that's, I'm in that automatic mode anyway. We feel just like zombies. I mean, she's not every because you weren't expecting it either. No, you know what I mean? At the start, at the start, you were expecting it. Yeah. But now you definitely no. weren't expecting it because you were like, no, she's got it. She's good. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And then you have a night and you're like, how dare you? I'm like, excuse me, you're not sleeping tomorrow. I'm not letting you do it. Anyway, let's go on to the next question. We'll just chin all the way through this if anyone's listening. I'm really sorry. <laughs> so, at what point? At what stage, sorry, do babies start changing the sleep cycle from newborn stage? And when is it recommended age to introduce babies to sleep through the night? So I've just said at eight to 10 weeks is when I was like, look, we need to stop doing this feeding and the Moses basket thing in the living room. We need to put her in the bedroom. At, I think it was eight to 10 weeks. Do you think that's about the right time? I think that's definitely the right time to start introducing a kind of a bedtime routine, but don't be expecting them to sleep through the night. No at that age the, the the minority of people that it happens to that's great it doesn't mean and you can listen to my own story that does not mean that it was always be that way no um but you know and if they do it great perfect no. but um there are babies that still don't sleep through the night up to 18 months they might be sleeping for, or waking for one feed and if you're happy to do that and they're happy and yeah everything's medically fine then fine. Yeah. Generally, though, I find that with most babies, and I emphasize the most, from about six months on, they can be capable of sleeping one 10 hour stretch and sometimes 12 hour stretches. Mm. Um, but not all. And when I say sleeping through the night as well, that's a very hard I suppose my sleeping through the night your sleeping through the night could be a different thing. Mm. Like sleeping through the night, some people is one chunk of five or six hours yeah and at, at the start when Lily made it <clears throat> excuse me 10 until four that was sleeping through the night then it moved from 10 until six and then it moved from 10 until eight and then eventually it was eight to eight um I mean in an ideal world sleeping through the night is 12 hours but generally it's not and then other people will say sleep through the night does that include a feed for a lot of babies under 12 months especially under nine months, I suppose, it does include a feed. Do you mean like a dream um, feed? Do you mean a dream feed or yeah. they might wake up for a feed. Depends okay. really what's working. Because dream feeds don't work for every baby. No, I tried it. It didn't for the Yeah, time. Yeah, it, it has worked for, it worked for the girls. Um, it didn't work for Harry at all. Um, he actually is on a medication. He has what's called a hemangioma, which is... Um, uh, a birthmark it's a benign birthmark but it does grow and it's on the skin now Lily may had the same thing um but the medication they were on meant that they had to be dream dream fit so it meant that i had a baby who was sleeping through the night and i had to actually give them a dream feed even yeah. though they you know they were sleeping without it it really interfered with harry's, harry's sleep at the time uh, it never interfered with, with Lil's sleep so basically you're um, saying that 
this is it's all kids are different we know that we yes. every single person that's listening now is going to know that every baby is very different and how do you do it and then not this isn't on our list now but how do you um well, I suppose you've learned you've gone to you know you've done a course on it but there's so many different varieties of sleeping like when a parent rings you or phones you or emails you you know how do you know when to go okay I suppose you ask certain questions don't to, you know the patterns or the behaviors and things like that do you? and then you kind of need it, yeah it has it. it has it's like it's what the word is holistic yeah. um from everything from what temperament they have what kind of a family dynamic they have yeah what way the baby was delivered has a real aspect of it in the early days as well and also if you know you're having sleep uh issues for a long long time and they've never really been resolved it can often uh, be linked back to you know traumatic births and things like that that yeah. you, you know issues were never resolved and um it's just I send them a questionnaire it's a client intake questionnaire and it just goes through everything from the due date the delivery date the delivery what type of delivery and every aspect of the child's day and every aspect of the child's night and what how the parents have dealt with it what has worked yeah. and then it also depends on how the family wants to deal with it i've had families come to me and go do the quickest thing i don't care you know and even though I'll give i'm you not really heroes if you sort this out for me today yeah, <laughs> yeah even though i'm not a fan of using uh harsher methods and stuff like that i'll put i you know maybe i won't start at the very gentlest method with that person maybe i'll step ramp it up a little bit yeah as i said i don't use cry it out um and if anyone came to me and wanted to use it i would just tell them to go elsewhere but um you know and then i have families who are like terrified because they just don't want to hear the baby cry at all but babies, babies have got to cry a bit though haven't they tessa i yeah, mean it's the I, only I know way about the cry out thing we're yes. trying to do this whole self-soothe thing because ronnie mm. the minute i lay her down she wakes up and cries yes. and like you said about your elders you know if i sleep during the day she has to sleep on me she's very mm. she, she can't lie down on i think it's the temperature for me i'm hot and then i put down in a cold car i think she just i don't know something and then yes. it feels like we need to because i always go oh she woke up again and he's like just leave her we'll yes. wait one minute one minute and if she, and, and then she'll go you know just whimpering and you can be a sleep consultant because you've got a girl Thanks, because then. that is like the first thing i would say to parents don't rush in immediately yeah. i mean obviously if there's something you need to rush in for rush in yeah but like i give um steps to parents and one of the yeah. one of the first steps is stop and observe yeah just to see what's happening because babies will wake well you'll think they're awake and they're screaming if you actually look at them their eyes are closed yeah, yeah. They're, they're, do you know, you what know and then you're like heads, ringing them up out of the yeah you're whooping them all out of the car and you're actually yeah, waking yeah. them up yeah so but you see parents don't know that nobody teaches us yeah. that stuff in the antenatal classes they're just like give them a pack and give them the shush and give them a rock and you know in like fairness though say it's two in the morning i live in a bungalow i've got fion next door who's mm. a terrible you know she suffers from nightmares a lot anyway and if ronnie's screaming i instantly wait and i've just woke up from it and i go <gasps> and instantly go over i've done it myself because i don't want her to wake fion up i think it's definitely worse having two because you just don't want the noise. You don't want the other one to wake up because then it's carnage yeah. and you don't want carnage at two o'clock in the morning. Do no, you? you don't. And that's a lot of parents come to me and say, oh, but we can't have any crying. Yeah. That's actually impossible. I can't. Yeah. There is no way and there is no one. Well, I hope there's no one because if there is someone, <laughs> they're wrong. But there is no one that can tell you that I guarantee you there'll be no crying. Like you could be doing everything for your baby and meeting all of their needs and they will still cry. It's their only way yeah that's just the communication isn't us. it yeah exactly so you talk a lot about um well you're a big advocate for white noise to help soothe babies so with Fion, she loved it i used to have a hoover app and she liked the vacuum cleaner hoover you know mm, yeah um, ronnie not so much she's just do you know it's funny completely different baby so yeah. why is white noise so calming for babies it's because I suppose it replicates the noise that was in the womb. If you think about a baby in the womb, um, it's not quiet in there. They're whooshing about inside the fluid. Yeah. There's 
there's quite a lot of noise. I suppose there's a lot of external noise in the later, the later dates as well, but also there's your heartbeat and there's um, the whoosh of the blood through the placenta and the umbilical cord. Yeah. So that is all very like white noise and it's constant and it doesn't stop. And that's why I suppose people advocate for white noise, especially from the early days, because it makes them feel more comfortable, like they're back in the womb. Yeah, I think um, I tried it when Moni was like three months old, but I suppose she's forgotten about the womb by then, hasn't she? And then there are there are babies that just never take to it. Yeah. And um, if you don't start it from day one, they'll never take to it. And then there's people like myself, like myself and Ali now love white noise <laughs> if i'm taking a nap i'll put the white noise on for myself and Can I just going completely off curve here i'm going to tell you a story yeah. i went to blackpool on the night out when i had a life back in the single days and <laughs> and there was a girl there in the group and she told us honest to god she was stunning everything about her was gorgeous she was in a girl band a welsh school girl band and everything thought she was ace i'd have a girl crush on her but then she told me the weirdest thing and i just went it's weird she said that she has to have the, I mean, I said the wrong word then, and a hairdryer on to go to sleep every night. Yeah, I know, a hairdryer. Like, that's not, that's not like a little fan in the living, in the bedroom. It was like a, it must be that noise to go. All I'm thinking of is fire risk. Yeah. <laughs> got to burn to death. I don't Jesus. know. I, I, yeah, I, I, mean, I think I pecked ahead for about an hour about that because I couldn't think of anything. Really? But she said she could. She must get really good quality sleep out of it then, obviously. Yeah, but she just couldn't yeah. go to sleep without it. And it's funny, like, Phil has to watch the TV to go to sleep. And do you know what? He watches horror films to go to sleep too. You know what I listen to to go to sleep? A lot of the times if I don't listen to White Noise. True crime documentaries. Yeah, he's the same. Do you know what I like? I like silence, reading a book falling asleep I could fall asleep instantly I don't need anything really yeah violence used to work for me but as I got older and I suppose your mind is so busy and that's yeah, the thing about an external noise as well for adults I think that it takes your mind off it and with the crime documentaries I, I do love true crime but I think it's just a monotone of the way they talk about oh it. yeah it's quiet isn't it they're not writing yeah. voices or anything yeah like you know you yeah. know no one's got to start screaming in the middle of it and you're not going to be like oh but I just think though, isn't your like subconscious? You'll know about sleep. Isn't your subconscious going? Fred and Rose West then mutilated their victims and put them in a basement. Isn't your brain <laughs> taking that in before you fall asleep? I would have a bloody nightmare that night. I know I would. <laughs> to be I, honest, I often thought about that night. I'm not. I'm, I'm not an expert or really know too much about adult sleep, but you just like it. <laughs> you know, I just like it, and then I don't have nightmares when I listen yeah. to it. Um. Fred and Rose West, another podcast. The first one that came to my mind. The first one that came to my mind. One the night. Yeah, like they're particularly sick ones. But like, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's never made, given me bad dreams or nightmares, I suppose, because I've always seen it as just something to wind down to. It's yeah. just the voices and the noise, I suppose, really. Rather not really than taking actually, it in either. I'm not really taking no. it in. No, just now, like maybe it is. Maybe I've completely buggered myself up, but I'm going to turn it into a series. <laughs> You think you're not taking in, but your subconscious is like, oh, <laughs> so if I want to kill Ollie, what I need to do is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, right. God. Okay. Next question. Uh, <laughs> what's where I am now? Um, I'll have to skip some because we've been talking for ages. Since the clocks have gone forward an hour, we have seen a big change to our Ronnie's bedtime routine. This could be coinciding with a teething because she's six months, one new seven. But I remember you put a post on your Instagram. Um, but what advice would you give to parents on the lead up to clocks going forward and back um, to make the transition easier? So for us, people have said, oh, put a blackout blind in the bedroom. And I'm like, that's all well and good. But up into the lead up of that, she's in the living room or in the kitchen and there's light coming in through every bloody window. Mm. So they're not daft. So what I would say was for this time of year, anyway, try your best to darken the house from about an hour before you go to bed. Yeah. So close the curtains, close the blinds if you think. Then pop up and do your bedtime routine in the bedroom in the dark. Now it doesn't have to be pitch black to do that, but as long you know, because oh, otherwise yeah. you're not gonna you're you're like Jesus, where's the cot? Yeah. But um, you know, just to kind of wind them down, um, I suppose, um, 
it's just important to kind of calm things down. And that's mm. what I would always say to parents is to, you know, you need that time in the evening to calm things down. And I, I do find even my own kids, you know, the light, it does affect them because yeah. it's such a massive, seems to have been a really rapid change this year. And I don't remember it being no, so I much don't. the last few years, but maybe it was because my kids were younger and they, they weren't so aware. But um, like, we do have a blackout blind. Um, but like Lenny Mae's five now, she knows it's still bright outside. You know, yeah. for some reason, she just goes to bed. Um, you know, we've been really religious with the bedtime routine. Yeah. Now at the weekends, we're a little bit more lax, but that's because I've got good sleepers. So I don't need to work on their sleep. Yeah. Excuse me, but people who are working on sleep, I would say that like for a few weeks while you're working on sleep, you, you might need to do a regular bedtime and a regular wake time. Um, and that might mean closing the curtains and turning down all the lights um, in, and then going into the bedroom and doing the bedtime routine in there um, and having that as dark as you can while you're doing whatever you do in your bedtime routine. Um, the other thing I would say for both the clock changes would be in the week prior to the clock change, you can adjust their routine by five minutes a day, 10 minutes. Yeah a day or 15 minutes every two days you know so um you could bring their wake up wake them up 15 minutes early bring their nap forward 15 minutes early bring their night their their nighttime bedtime forward 15 minutes early and then by the time you get to the night or the day of the clock change you know hopefully things were good but it's not without its problems it's you know it's it's very it's a hard transition and I do find that spring forward is generally easier because most people's complaints are early rising. And, um, you know, it kind of solves that for a little bit, a little while. But then when the light is creeping in in the morning, it can bring the early rising back up. Um, it's the fallback that usually is the harder. Really? Why? Because I always yeah. thought it gets dark I, earlier. It gets dark I, in the mornings. No, it doesn't. I does don't. It? I don't know. I suppose it's because if you're waking up the day after the clocks change, and usually you wake at seven, and that morning you wake at six, you can have a baby who is very overtired by the time you're going to yeah, bed that night. That, and and overtiredness is the number oh. one enemy. You know, it's just yeah. like fighting, fighting, fighting. You know, and I think that's that's really probably what it is i find that usually the spring forward time change is harder with older kids because they're like but it's bright outside yeah you know yeah but just being really consistent that mm -hmm. is like something i would tell everyone that i work with being consistent being yeah. the same thing you have to be like a broken record and usually that works i'm a re i'm a real stickler for bedtimes and i know that phil's daughter um is one of his elder daughters came around for dinner she didn't come around till six and I was like oh. because mm. then we've had dinner by then but then they get all hyperactive they're all my feelings yeah. and it's all like let's run around let's play games which is lovely I'll never stop sisters seeing each other of course we'll yeah. do that but then it's getting to like but my wind down is quarter to seven right Fionn let's put pyjamas on now Fionn do you want a cup of tea because it's all she drinks is tea deep <laughs> tea um and then we'll put I don't know a program on and then we do cuddles and then I'll go and take it to bed to read a book and I'm not that strict that, you know, if there's parties or going around to barbecues, yeah. I'm not that strict. But I am when we're at home and I just think I don't want it to go all haywire. And I think it got, it feels like, like a broken record. I was going, Sophie, and it's quarter past seven now. So I'm going to let you stay up a little bit later because Maddie's here. OK, right, Fionn, it's 20 past seven. Now, and I was just like tying her down. Um, yeah. And I said, look, Maddie can read your book. And she was like, no, I want me to do it. I was like, oh, okay, because it's routine and she likes routine. Yeah, and that's nice. Book. And it just, I think it was eight o'clock, but she fell fast asleep. And I thought, it's all right for one off. But yeah, I'm so yeah. looking for it. Because it's, the thing, the thing is, so it's so, it's so important. Like you think about yourself, you have your own bedtime routine. You might even know it, but you go up, you brush your teeth, you put on your pajamas, you know, and that is a routine. Of course it you is, don't yeah. run around the house 10 times and then no. jump into the bed and expect to fall asleep. No. No. I mean, after a couple of wines, maybe we will. Live. Maybe. But, but they need to be, you know, they need to be starting to wind down because 
like I suppose if they're horsing around and having horse play and things like that before bedtime on a regular basis, it's not going to be conducive to a good a good it night. Confuses sleep. them because you're letting them run around crazy, mad, busy. Like, wait, well, let's throw you up. This is why I said Phil, calm down now. We yes, need calm yeah. time, which is lovely. Yes. I get it. He's out all day. You've probably had it with Ollie today. You know, Every, yes. and they go, phew, and they throw them in the air. And I, I love that. But I'm like, right. And he'll look at me and I'll go, enough. And he'll yeah. go, okay. And he knows. Yeah. Because it's I'm really like, hard. It's really hard. Yeah. A lot of parents have that because whatever parent is staying at home has been there all day and is ready now for the cam. Yes. wind down of the evening and then the parent comes in who's missed them all day yeah, and course. winds them up yeah and you know you can see both sides yeah but you, you know it, it it still is important you just have to weigh it up you know you can still have that connection with your child without the way i chase them around phil, the house i said to phil can you imagine we're saying oh yeah funny that's funny for you ha ha yeah let's jump on the sofas beyond let's throw let's throw you around for you but then you've now decided, oh, I'm fed up now. I don't want to do that anymore. And it's her bedtime. No, Fiona, you're not doing that now. No, come on, we need to sit down and be calm now. Come on, do it. You're then telling yeah. her off but when you've just, you've just escalated. It's so confusing, it. you know Frank. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Of it is. Yeah. And I think he was like, oh, yeah, I don't. Because you don't. He, like I said, he comes in, he's so excited. He's been in work for 10 hours and he just wants to see the kids, you know, which is fair yeah. enough. So if and it's okay, and it's okay to do that sometimes as yeah, well. I just want to say that you don't have to do that every time, but definitely by the majority of times, you want to have it quiet and calm. Yeah, in the time before you go to bed. It's nothing. I've got to admit, there's nothing worse than when people go, "Oh no, I can't possibly come out because so and so's got on that time at one o'clock, and I don't leave the house at that time." Da, 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 da. I'm like, mate, if you don't do that, this is before lockdown, and you're going, "What?" You know, I've always said that kids need to work around your lifestyle. And they'll adapt. And like my girls have been really good and they adapt to things really well. But like I said, when they're at home, they know the they know the rules at home. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's nothing worse than a nap nap trapped, I call it. You're trapped by the nap. Yeah. I you can't know. Say, I say there are so many people I know that are like that won't yeah. go out in the afternoons because the kids nap. And I'm like, well, they'll nap in the pram. No, they won't. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's hard. And the older they get, it's harder to introduce. Routine, it's habit. It becomes a, a habit. And they they yeah. won't sleep anywhere else then, will they? I'm going to become no. a sleep consultant. I've decided. You are. You are. <laughs> you can be the Irish one. I'll be the Welsh one. <laughs> sleepy <laughs> mummy. 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 <laughs> the sleepy mummy. <laughs> mummy. So you offer an array of different packages for parents, but the yes. sleep in a snack package seems to be really popular. Now, you just told me before I hit record about another thing, so you can talk about that one as well. Mm-hmm. So do you want to explain what that package is and also the new thing that you're going to be introducing soon? Yeah. So the sleep in a snack package is a 20-minute package, and I just started that because I was getting, as we were talking about earlier, yeah. so many questions in the DMs, and... Um, a friend of mine she talks on her Instagram page about getting lost in the DMs and I never knew what that was until you know a few months ago and I was like holy I mean I'm inundated Um, and there was lots of complicated questions that were I suppose needed more than a one sentence answer and you know needed I needed to ask lots of questions before I give them advice so I said right this person doesn't need a full hour long with me with a whole plan Um, so I just said I would offer a 20 minute consult and it's just a session where you can ask me whatever the hell you want to ask this is over um, the phone or is it by zoom is, or both this is over the I use the 20 minute session over the phone because by the time I've connected to zoom and everything there's so many oh times you know yeah, yeah. Tech, not very tech savvy here um so um and you know a lot of parents will use it for um early mornings is something that they use it for and I could just run through all the strategies that you can use or some of the strategies that you can use um and then um also use it for people who think that you know they just need a tweak in their routine minor improvements um some people will come to me and say my baby's only rocked to sleep they're seven months old he will only be rocked to sleep he's waking an hour every night I want to book a 20 minute session that's not going to do no you know, I can't give you what you need in 20 minutes. Um, however, a lot of people do use the 20 minute session. Then as a follow up, if they hit, if they've been working with me and then a couple of months later, they've just hit a little bump in the road or they're going through a regression and something like that. Um, they'll use the 20 minute session as a quick, quick call. And it's also more affordable for them as well, because, um, you know, you're not paying for the full hour and you're not pay- paying for my 
time to go through an intake questionnaire. Don't do an intake questionnaire for that. And you're not paying for my time to do up a sleep plan for you either. Do you know what they so, think about when you've got a baby? There's so many things that you question about everything, especially if you're a new mum. By the time you've done it two or yeah. three times, you're like, oh, yeah, she'll be fine. You know, you don't really worry so much, do you? But yeah. first time mums do, I'm dads. Um, and I think, it's you think, oh, I'd, I want to ask a question, but oh, 80, 90 quid. I'm like, oh, I just want to ask a question. So I think 20 minutes is fab because I would be yeah. more inclined to do that. And then if that person said, look, and they felt they were genuine, you need more support, then I'd go, okay, I think we need more support then. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because it, like, as I said before, I'm not about like taking as much money as I can get because yeah. there's no point me saying, oh my God, I'm going to give you an hour when I'm actually trying to find things to talk about after 20 minutes. Do you know what I mean? So you're going to and rely on word of mouth, Tessa, and if people are saying, yeah. no, she's just ripping money out of me, yeah, my friend center, exactly. I'm not getting anything Ex- returned. You're not going to get any returned customers, are you? Or any recommendations? No, I'm not. You know, and I've had a couple of people that have come to me for some um you know little bits of advice and then if they said to me oh we're actually going through a regression um can we book another session with you and it's great because i only charge 30 euro at the moment um, so if anyone's in the uk can they do it if are you just for they can they can do it in the uk no problem i'm just trying to find out what what um she's googling it what's gbp isn't it <laughs> You yeah, haven't had Euros that long, have you? You've completely forgotten. I, oh, no, you were in Australia for a while. We had I, well, I was in Australia and we had yeah, the Irish yeah. pound, so it was always different. Uh, £27. Oh, see, that's not bad at all. Yeah. So I'm gonna, yeah. I need to write that down. I need to write that down. All... You know what? Can I just say, everybody, she's making out that I've not even tried to do your Irish accent because I wouldn't insult you. <laughs> You have now spoken in a Cockney accent three times during this podcast. <laughs> and in fact, I am North Walian. Granted, I, know, I don't but I can't do very well. I can't do well, accent. Do you know what? If I wasn't a better person, I'd be quite insulted. <laughs> but I'm not, I even, can't do a Welsh accent. She's like, she's I'm, doing an EastEnders impression. I know. <laughs> It's like when I was in Australia and people used to be saying to me, oh, diddly dee, diddly do. And I'd be like, what? <laughs> so that's me. That's me. I've turned into what I hated. <laughs> well, I think that's everything, haven't we? Because I've got to edit so much of this out. Oh, I know. I want to talk about my newborn. Oh, thing. yeah, of course. Yeah, go, go, go. Yeah. So the new session that I'll be offering, um, I offered at the moment for a one-on-one. And it's just for parents uh, who are either expecting or have babies up to three months. Um, And it's just to prepare them about what to expect with sleep, what normal sleep is, the science of sleep, how you can help your baby to sleep and how you can gently kind of nudge them into a routine. I'm working on moving that over to a webinar slash workshop online thing so that it'll be more cost effective um, for people. But um, I just put up a post on that and my Instagram page today about that. At the moment, I'm doing it um, just one-on-one when I get the time to figure all this technology out and event bright and all that kind of stuff. I'll move yeah. it into uh, the workshop. But if anyone's interested, um, please yeah. slide into my DMs. <laughs> slide into my DMs. So <laughs> basically just follow the sleepy mammy. So that's the sleepy mammy. Yeah, mammy. very Irish. Yeah, mammy. Very Irish, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that's my not... Australian. That's my oh, Australian man. accent. Stop it, please. Yeah, you can talk about wine, can't yeah. you? <laughs> But if you look on his you, you can find Tessa there. Or her email address is the sleepy mammy at gmail.com. Yes. Um, but I follow her. So if you on my Insta, just have a look and you'll find her on the yeah. number one fan list. She's there. She's right at the top. She loves me so much. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's everything, you know. Just trying to figure out if we've covered everything. Yeah, I think I have. Oh, one question I wanted to ask you. Um, yes. I asked you about Fionn because we've got some concerns about this thing and I have read up on and I think she might have this certain thing. What age do people like yourselves go up to? So you know, if someone said my four-year-old is having sleeping problems, do you deal with that age group? What's the Yeah, I, I deal age? up to age five, I suppose. And I would probably, like, I do a session um, 
my kind of, I suppose, top package involves an hour long consultation and then two weeks of support while you implement a plan. Um, I don't start that until about five or six months usually um, because they just have the capability of that. So before yeah. that, um, I just usually have one off sessions. Mm-hmm. Um, but I you work up until the age, uh, up to the age of five. Okay. Um, are other sleep consultants I think that do up to six and I have even seen that do up to 16 yeah um however I haven't got there yet maybe I'll do more courses no, maybe and do will. that it's just we're but, concentrated more on the newborn thing because I said to you what do most people ask you about yeah newborn stage but let's face it that's the majority but it doesn't mean everybody so yes. I didn't really struggle with the newborn stage I've now found that Fiona's only three and I think she has this sleep what did I say it was a kind of confusional arousal oh, the disorder the confusional arousals yeah where she, when but she's been doing it since very young where she when she wakes up from naps she cries as she wakes up and she'll mm-hmm. cry in the middle of the night she's very distressed when she wakes up you know she doesn't wake up and go oh lovely you know she's always seems to be having a nightmare and just really sad and then when I read up on it it said that she'll grow out of it when she's five so I'm not massively concerned mm. we've got to deal with but I just wondered I was like, who do we speak to about it? Like, I wouldn't have a clue. And I, I know you're dealing with a newborn, but it's good to know that someone yeah. like that could deal with naught to five, you know. Well, uh, to be honest, no, but with, with things like confusion and arousals and, and disordered sleeping and things like that, I would actually probably go, if you were very concerned, I would actually go down a medical route rather than yeah. coming to someone like me because they'll know better. They'll yeah. do the whole, there's no point in you paying someone like me who's telling you the tactics and how to avoid it and things like that because it may have for some children underlying um causes and things like that so you're better off if yeah. if you are concerned about it and a lot of that you'll find with people with children who have additional needs or maybe um on the spectrum and things like that um i think it's often best if you have concerns like that yeah. to go to someone medical but you, know, you were just saying about trauma at birth I mean I, I always say to Phil you never know when she was first born they had to put a blanket over her incubator for two days because she had such bad trauma that she couldn't bear the light and things like that so I just mm. think you never know like talk about subconscious no, you never know you don't know what they've taken in what they're thinking no. what they're you know the the nerves and things like that it's crazy it's just really fascinating to it is isn't it yeah, yeah. it would be not it would be good to know like I know they say that nobody ever remembers being born but definitely I can see that birth does have an impact later on in children as regards to sleep anyway really yeah interesting i need to look yeah. into that more because maybe, maybe, it maybe it's because a lot of the time it's how we as parents are dealing with it and because we deal with it a little bit differently if we've had a traumatic experience or something like that i don't yeah. know but um because trauma is trauma is traumatic i suppose do you know what i mean like it's not mm. normal and nobody knows how to deal with it and you know, it's not something that anybody expects to happen. I just so, remember that's the first memory when they wheeled me up there and I went, oh, why have you got a blanket over an incubator? And they said, she's experienced such trauma that she's um, she's shaking. Um, so oh we're having God, to put a blanket over her. Heart. And I'm thinking, she's like hours old, like 12 hours old and she's got tra- she's been traumatised. And I'm like, what the hell? That's just like, I know. it's crazy. And you never think now she's three I think people forget the beginning of life she's had and they'll say something about speech or and I'll go you do remember that she was born dead and that she was just take four minutes and she had huge trauma and they go oh yeah okay I'm like you know yeah. God, give her a break guys do you yeah know I mean? yeah like she's a miracle like isn't she she's yeah. just oh, absolutely. she was a fighter from the start you know and she's a fighter now and I just wish she wouldn't <laughs> fight with me <laughs> you know what you don't want her to be submissive in life, do you? That's the way I look at it. I, I'm like, I'm constantly fighting with Lily Mae and I'm like, oh my God, she's so bloody stubborn. And I want her to bend and I want her to do what I'm telling her to do. But I don't want her to go out in the world and do that. So no, I'm I, trying I, to teach I'm myself. Opposite. I'm like, I want her to be a sassy little demon. Yes. And she won't take shit. Excuse my swearing, but she won't take shit off anyone. Anyone. If she doesn't want to do it, yeah. she won't do it. And yeah. I think that makes people feel very awkward. Because she, even now, she doesn't kiss people on the lips. She won't even kiss me and Phil on the lips. She's just... She's really? Never, no. Nope. Yeah. She's, she's never wanted to, and we never push her. I don't believe in that. So yeah, she goes like that and gives us a cheek. And I'm like, so, you know, and they go, oh, give me a kiss on the lips. I'm like, mum, she doesn't want to. 
Uh, no, not yeah. she want to. You know, don't make it. She doesn't want to. Yeah, um, that's what I'm struggling with at the moment. I'm trying to teach. Uh, uh, I'm at home and I'm like, why won't you do what I tell you the first time yeah. I tell you? But I don't want her to go into the world like that no. and do what other people be are telling her. So I don't want to be a pusher. Yeah. Either. No. But I do at home with me. Yeah, I know. This I'm is the same. what I'm trying to teach her. Be that person beyond outside. While you're in my yeah. room, you do as mummy says. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard they can't understand it Liz. they can't understand us they're like they want me to be two people like hello <laughs> do as i say not as i do no. go yes, on exactly. <laughs> right i better go because phil will be needing to come okay. to the kitchen and i've been here for an hour and 40 minutes i know now. i'm just gonna finish this now and then i'm gonna go and eat some chips God, mm. I'm, um, i haven't finished my wine i've got this much left that's good isn't it that's not that bad back in the day we would have had that before i went out for a night out not bad <laughs> <laughs> oh thank Indeed. you so much Johnny with us. it's been really lovely talking to you and I hope you too Lynn lovely this will help everybody and um yeah if anyone's thank got any you. questions just drop her a, li- a message on uh, thanks everyone button. for listening yeah Bye. and um, I will edit the hell out of this on the podcast because <laughs> it's just waffling but I won't for the YouTube so all the YouTube people that are watching we're very sorry but we're having a lovely time and this is the first time we've had a proper one-to-one chat with each other as well isn't it it's like a night out I feel like I'm in a club <laughs> a lovely night so everybody <laughs> cheers thank you very much cheers. thanks for listening cheers. bye bye <laughs>